Amen. How many love the Lord this morning? Love the Lord and grateful to be in his house today, this beautiful Sunday morning, May 16, 2021. We are blessed today, aren't we? Can I get, is there somebody out there who can testify, I am blessed? I am blessed today. We are blessed to be in God's house, blessed to be in his presence, blessed to be uh, wherever God is today, and he is right here, and we are so thankful for that, amen? I love the Lord. want to welcome our Facebook friend, family out there. Welcome to our church this morning. Welcome to Full Gospel Interdenominational Church. We're glad you're here with us, and we're glad all of you are here with us too. Amen. On this beautiful Sunday morning, I thought of this scripture in Psalms 118, verse 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Come on, can you rejoice today to be in God's house? This is his day. He's made this day. He's made it for you. He's made it for me. He's made it for every single one of us. This is the day the Lord has made. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. Send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Amen. God is looking for us to bless his name this morning. So together as a body, let's bless the name of the Lord and worship him. Amen. Whether you're here in the sanctuary, whether you're at home watching, don't matter if you're on your couch, if you're standing in your living room kitchen, together we can bless the Lord. Amen. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice this morning in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. How many of you know there's power in the blood of Jesus? I said, how many of you know there's power? Hallelujah. Come on, sing it this morning. Whoa, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. From your burden of sin, there's power in the blood, there's power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. I know there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Than snow. 
power in the blood, power in the blood. And who you live his praises to sing this wonderful power in the blood. I know there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Come on, sing that one more time. There is, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. that it still washes by the snow.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It still washes. It washed me years ago. 1986, I came to the Lord and it washed me then and it still washes me now. How many of you can be a witness that the blood of Jesus still washes white as snow? That first song that we sang, how many remember when Reverend Mancini used to lead song service? Got a few? There is power. That's the first song I ever heard when I walked into this church. Hallelujah. And years later, the power of Jesus is still the same. Do I have a witness here today? Hallelujah. 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 Well, you all know this one. We've sung it a few times. We want you to join in with us. Hallelujah. Anybody thankful here this morning? That was a question. That wasn't rhetorical. Is anybody here thankful this morning? Hallelujah.
Somebody here, lift up your voice in praise to God and thanks to God. Somebody lift up a shout of victory. Hallelujah. physically be dead to have to get up out of a grave? Amen? You know, pastor's been preaching about that lame man that was by the gate and Peter and John came by. He wasn't physically dead, but man, his, his, his body was dead. His spirits were dead. He was broken on the inside. Hallelujah. But along came somebody said, I don't have silver and gold, but this is what I have. In the name of Jesus, get up out of that bed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's been times during the week, you know, just, you know, just the weight of everything around us. You like, you just feel like, oh man, like, what is this feeling? And then you get, you get thinking about God and all of us, you can't get thinking about the goodness of God and all he's done for you then very soon you're like, I'm up out of that grave. I don't feel that anymore. I don't feel that heaviness anymore. I don't feel, I don't feel that heaviness in my mind anymore. Why? Because you got up out of that grave. Amen? 
Anybody ever had to get up out of a grave? Anybody ever felt you've been in that grave too long? Well, can these old dry bones live again? Thou knowest, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Get up out of that grave. Amen. Hallelujah. You ever feel God just like, now I've, I've never, I mean, I've flown in an airplane, but I've never flown through, you know, this, you know. Like, but have you ever felt like God literally like lift you up? Just like, God, God can do something so amazing and God will lift you up out of the place that you're in and the feeling that you're in. It don't matter what has got you there. It don't matter if it's sickness, if it's job, if it's family, if it's the world. If you're feeling down, Jesus Christ can lift you up out of that place. Hallelujah. Woo. You know, good old, good old Lazarus, he got out of that grave and he didn't even stink. Amen. So when God raises you up, there's going to be nothing lost. Just lift your hands up to him this morning and let Jesus Christ help pull you up out of that place and set you up on high. Amen this morning. God came to have church this morning. Amen. Amen. I came to have church this morning. Some of you came to have church this morning. Amen. God is with us this morning. I thank God. I thank God. Amen. Amen. Before we're seated, let's honor our country this morning. I'm going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. going to give them a second to get that up on the screen. Amen. Because it takes just a moment. Amen. Let us honor our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you this morning. Amen. God is just so good this morning, so thank you for, if you're new here this morning, I want to welcome you out, welcome you out to God's house, welcome you out to the Full Gospel Interdenominational Church. If you're first time tuning in with us on Facebook, Welcome out to you as well. Glad to have you join us. And uh, just blessed to be able to be here today. Amen. This morning, as uh, you know, we've been uh, uh, blessed to have you give. And you've always been so faithful. We just want to take this moment right now to thank you for all you've, all you're given. Thank you for giving in the past. Thank you for giving this morning. And I uh, just want to let you know if you are here and you would like to give, there are different ways you can give if you're watching on Facebook um, if you're here live in the auditorium, we do have uh, kiosks in the back of the church that you can just drop an offering in there. It'd be wonderful. Uh, drop, drop it in when you enter or exit. That's for you. Also, for those watching if you any, or here, want to mail it in, P.O. Box 4017, Manchester, Connecticut, 06045. Also, you know we have our church website, fgichurch.org, and you can go there to give. Amen. Many opportunities. And then we also, as you know, have our Easy Tithe app. You can search our church and you can choose that to give. Amen. And so we're just thankful there's still opportunity to give. Thank you for giving and thank you for being a blessing in doing so. Amen. Amen. I don't know. I'm just grateful this morning. I came in just excited about God. And, you know, I love church. I love church. I love coming to church. I love seeing the family of God. I love getting in God's presence. I love worshiping, being in God's presence. Love hearing his word come and feed us. We can feast on that. So blessed this morning. Amen. Amen. This morning we're going to have our choir. They're going to sing to us this morning. If you're in the choir, our choir is going to stand. Folks, don't leave it up to the choir. Sing all, sing all with them. Join in with this mighty team, amen, that's spread out throughout the whole auditorium. Amen. Stand and sing with them. And after their choir is done, Reverend Kalinsky is going to come. Reverend Kalinsky is going to minister the word of God to us this morning. If you'd like to come back. Amen. God bless. Let's just worship God. Just 
I know your neighbor may be a few feet away from you. Just turn to them. Just turn to them. Say hi. Say how good God is. Say hello. Say I love. Well, I mean, you may not want to say I love, but I love you in the Lord, brothers or sisters. Amen. In Christ. God bless you as our choir sings. Declaring the word of the Lord And these are the days of your servant Moses Righteousness being restored And though these are days of great trials A famine and darkness in sword Still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the cloud, shining like the sun. At your people, lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee, out of Zion. The dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as white in the world. And we are the laborers in your field. Jehovah, there's no God like 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 Jehovah. 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 There's no God like Jehovah.
Jehovah. There's no God like 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 Jehovah. Come on, tell your neighbor. Then tell your neighbor, there's no God like Jehovah. Do you mean that today? Glory. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Well, it's good to be in Father's house. Come on, somebody. Is it good to be in Father's house? <clears throat> my, 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 my. Come on, look at your neighbor. Welcome them out. Tell them it's good to see them. Amen. People of like precious faith. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. I am happy to be here. Joyful to be here. Glad to be here. Come on, somebody. We're getting situated here. I started on my computer, and I tried to cut and paste, and I shut that computer off. I said, I'm going old school, and I took out the pencil, and I just started writing. It was a whole lot easier spending more time trying to cut and paste and put things in place. Sister Marie, I said, I'm done with it. So <laughs> we're old school. Hey, got any old school folks out here today? <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> well, God is good. And uh, God called us to this hour. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God called us to this hour in the church. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking a minute ago when, uh, when it came time, you know, as a firefighter and, you know, you wore your uniform, but it was time when the bell hit and uh, you know you were going out, there was a reportable structure fire, you got rid of the uniform, you put on your turnout gear, amen, you put on your helmet, your mask, your Scott tank, amen, and you are going to fight the red devil. We called the fire the red devil when it was out of control, amen, but you also had the buildings to deal with and sometimes people to deal with and all types of things. So I'm going to get comfortable this morning and take off this tie, amen, and get ready for the battle, amen. Come on, tell yourself, we're going to get into the word and we're going to battle, amen, a lot of things this morning. So welcome your neighbor. purple this morning. Come on, Brian. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, O oh God. Oh God, Lord. God, we praise you. We love you. We worship you, God. We thank you for your abiding presence, O oh God. We thank you that we can come together and worship you, God, and love you freely, God. And God, if I ever feel that I'm in your will with a word this morning for your people and your behalf, this morning is it, God. So bless the word to the hearts of your people, Lord. Let us run with it in faith, God. Let us be encouraged. Let us be challenged. Let us make changes if need be to walk closer with you, Lord Jesus, in the hour you called us in this day, in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church said, amen, amen and amen. Hope you brought your Bibles with you. Talking to you for a little while on which way are you going? Tell your neighbor, which way are you going? 
Much has happened in our world in the last 17 months. Amen. The world we live in seems to have gotten much worse. Amen. I pulled uh, a few of these facts off the internet just the other day. Some things may have changed between now and then. But just to bring you up a little bit on current events, Russia is massing troops, amen, on the border of Ukraine, and Ukraine is thrusting to take Crimea. Israel, as we know, is under attack. Once again, it's the Palestinians fighting against Israel concerning the area called the Temple Mount. That sound familiar? If you go to the BBC uh, and the title, Israel Intensifies Attacks in Gaza as Conflict Enters the Fifth Day, you'll pull the whole article up. Amen. Turkey has started several wars wanting to destroy Greece, Israel, and Cyprus. China is thrusting, uh, threatening Taiwan and its neighbors while also threatening our ships and our navy. Amen. North Korea is testing missiles again. Amen. Restarting their nuclear program once again. Iran is making more than their normal threats, and the list can go on and on and on. Many commodities have given way, amen, and gone up in price, as we all know. Lumber, steel, wheat, cotton, uh, amen, silver, oil, and many more have gone up greatly in price. One example, a 2 by 4 by 8 used to be about $3. Now it's $8 and more, depending on where you go. So let's go back in time for a moment. They faced, the early church, various things just like we do today. Rome had conquered the known world. When you conquer something, you take it over. So they had conquered the known world. Perhaps others at, uh, have tried as well, but the great Maccabean revolt rose up against the government, the Romans, which led to the second temple being destroyed in Jerusalem in 70 AD by General Titus. Amen. You have, if you look across the news, you got various nations rising up against one another, neighbor against neighbor, ethnic group against ethnic group. That's what it meant, nations against nations. It's all over the world. Amen. There was heavy taxation by the people, which made it very hard to live, by the way, especially if you have a meager income. There were many, many uh, diseases, if you will. How do we know this? Because Jesus was healing them all of their diseases. Many diseases. I mean, back in that day, absolutely. Turn with me, if you will, for a moment to Matthew 1 and 34. Let's see if it's in your Bible. I got my big study Bible, so I have to flip a little differently here than my, the small one I like to use when I come to church. But this is my study. Let's see if it's in the Bible. We face many things in our day. Did I get the right scripture here? Maybe it was Mark 134. Let's go to Mark and see if Mark's there, Sister Janice. Thank you. Let's see if it's there. It's good to hear the pages turning in the Bible. If you get there, tell me I'm right or wrong. Maybe I wrote it down wrong. Is that the scripture? Yes. Well, 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 we'll take our time here. We're in Father's house. And the Bible says, And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of death divers diseases, that means many diseases, and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. So back in that day, and you can take down a note here in Matthew 4 and 24 and Luke 4 and 40, all about Jesus healing all types of diseases and sickness. Amen. Sounds familiar to our day. Everywhere Jesus went, he went about doing good. Amen. So we find here, Jesus warned us of many things that would be happening in our world as time went on. If you turn with me to Matthew chapter 24, let's read a couple of things here so we can get a better picture here, starting at verse 3. When you get there, say amen. 24 and verse 3. 
And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Tell your neighbor, take heed that no man deceive you. Could be the one sitting next to you. Oh, no, that couldn't happen. It could be. Take heed that no man, see, this is an individual walk with God. Your husband can't lead you into heaven. Your wife can't lead you into heaven. Your mother's not taking you with her. Your father's not taking you in the back pocket. Everybody has to go on their own merits. I love you. I want you to go with me, but I can't take you with me, Brother Chris. Come on, somebody. This is an individual road, an individual choice. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not soon troubled. Come on, somebody. Be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, food shortages, pestilences, diseases, great diseases, the Spanish flu in 1918, and many other diseases. He said they're coming. They'll be there. Amen. The coronavirus is nothing different. It's one of these. He spoke this thousands of, a couple of thousand years ago. We shouldn't be shaken. He told us these things would happen. Earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning. Well, let's go a little further here. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Hallelujah. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So they were curious in their day of things happening and what's going on and what's the sign of you coming, Lord, and yada, yada, yada. And he told them, the early church lived in perilous times. We also live in perilous times. Perilous, danger or risk. Amen. You can go outside the door and someone, a bullet can go flying down the road and you're gone. We don't know from one day to the other. So you might as well pull up your bootstraps. Come on, somebody. Walk in faith. Walk with God because nothing certain but this. I'm going to meet Jesus one day. I've made my choice. I know where I'm going. If I leave here, then it must be the will of God. The Bible says God directs the steps of the righteous man. Got any righteous folk out here today? God directs the steps. If we listen, ah, we can spend a while here, preacher. If we listen, he'll direct our steps. Yes. John 16 and 33 says this. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Make no mistake about it. You shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, he says. I have overcome the world. Come on, somebody. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I want to read this little portion in the footnote here. Amen. Go ahead and praise him, whoever you are, young, young lad, young lady. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
in the world we shall have tribulation. In my footnote it says this, the basic meaning of the Greek is thelipsis here means the word pressure. So in the world you're going to have pressure. Anybody feel pressure? We won't ask what type. He just said, in the world you'll feel pressure. As a Christian, you're going to feel pressure, especially the pressures that come to us when we're openly identified with Jesus in the world. These pressures are a fact of life. Amen. But we can take courage because Jesus has triumphed, especially in his resurrection, and we share in his triumph. Come on, somebody. We are more than overcomers. A Christian, a true born-again, spirit-filled Christian ought to have a smile on their face. Come on, I mean, it doesn't mean we don't have hard times, but on the inside, you know, joy, he said that my joy might remain in you. The inner joy is untouchable by this world. Oh, come on, somebody. Nobody can touch the joy inside of you. You just have to stir it up. Oh, come on, the preacher talked about it this morning. You know, I'm just glad to be in his presence. I'm glad to be here in the house of God. I'm happy to be singing. I, he could have just went off and ran with what? He was stirring up the oil tank on the inside. Look, if things get a little heavy, just have a little time alone with God. I used to call it take a bathroom break, shut the door, and just praise God for a minute before you go back out in the workforce because sometimes things get hard. We heard Minister Owens talk about it a while ago. It wasn't too sweet for a little while on the job. Sometimes you need a bathroom break just to get your spiritual senses, if you will, and praise God and go back out with a smile anyhow. Oh, glory to God. Aren't you glad you're saved? Hallelujah, I'm glad I'm saved. Forty years, and I'm still saved. Got anybody back that been saved a while here? My, my, my. A Christian who has accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. We must, you must, overcome the world, Satan, and your flesh. It hasn't changed since the early church. You must overcome this world. And you can't do it alone. But you must do it with your choice. That's the difference. You can't do it alone. That's why we came to God. There was troubles. Thank God for troubles. Because we realize living our own humanistic life, living on to self, trying to do our own thing, albeit we have good, good intentions, without God we realized we weren't going anywhere, we were treading water. But thank God you heard the word one day, your heart got convicted, you accepted him inside, and the battle is the same. We, we have to overcome the world, Satan, and our flesh. Satan has been, by the way, defeated at Calvary. We walk in the victory of Christ, amen, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Does the, does the blood still have power, Brother Phil? Yes, it does. Cleansing power in the blood of Jesus. However, we must be careful of his devices. The Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. He will try to dupe us up. He will try to get us to slip. He will try to get us to fall back into sin. He will try to get us to break ranks. He will try to get us to rise up against spiritual leadership. He will try to get us to hate a brother or sister. He will try, 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 but the Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. He tries to get us to separate ourselves from Jesus himself and from his church. Maybe some of you are struggling in that area. I don't know. The church world at large. I speak to a few pastors in the last several months. I can get some out. I got the faithful out. I got some that won't come out. I got some who's not coming out, and they're not coming back. I have tried. I have tried. It is what it is. And that's, I hear that across the country. 
Same, same thing. We're living in the same day, brethren. So we're not ignorant of the battle in front of us. Come on. We're not. We have to overcome, amen, Satan. He's defeated. we got to keep him defeated. we got to overcome the world. We must separate ourselves from this present evil world. Separate. I remember the time years ago, not that anything was wrong with the ball game. I was asked to go be a part of the ball game uh, with some guys in the fire department. One says, well, you know, Reb, you ain't got to drink, just have a Coke, you know. And, but I knew everything else that's going to go on and, 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 and different things are going to arise. And I just didn't feel right in my spirit about it. So I'm saying it's a ball game. You know, I show myself friendly going to the ball game. And I'm, look, I'm not judging nobody. This was me back then, okay? This was my day. You got to make decisions for yourself where you are and what things of the world, be it good or bad, I mean, you weigh it out. Nothing's really, uh, uh, unless you feel a struggle there. Look, the bottom line is this if you set anything before Christ, it's too much. If you set anything before God in His Word, it's too much. So I wanted to be a part, and I said, there's nothing really wrong with it, even though I felt grieved. I know things would be spoken and this and that, and, 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 and you know, that's just the way it is. And uh, so I was praying about it, and uh, that Sunday morning, the man of God got up and preached. He said, touch not, taste not, handle not the unclean thing. And I knew God was talking to me. May not be you. You see, when the word comes, and if something's hitting our spirit, we sit like this. We think everybody knows what God's talking to us about. I'm not moving. But nobody knows but you and God. You came to hear the word this morning. You'll come to hear it again Wednesday night. You'll come, Lord willing, next Sunday to hear the word. Why? God is going to help us to walk with him in present day victory. He's going to challenge us. Come on, somebody. He's going to challenge our lifestyle, our walk, what we think about, what we talk about, what we look upon. He's going to challenge all of it by his word. Why? Because he loves us. We must keep ourselves separate from this world. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. I did not mark all of these verses. And I have this big Bible here. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. We will take our time here. Well, I've got plenty of time. All right, what's it say? Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. You have to determine in your heart what's right and what's not right. As long as we keep an even balance, We'll be all right. It's perspective. Come on, tell your neighbor, it's perspective. Godly perspective at all times. I'll say it again. Godly perspective at all times. Romans 12 and 2. We know that scripture pretty much, but I want to read it. Romans 12 and 2. I bes- well, let's go back to verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you personally present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable un- unto who? Unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of it, your mind, that you personally may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Perfect will of God. You. God makes it personal talking to us. See, he knows where we live. Let's go to John 15 and 19. John 15 and 19. 
Let's go back to 18. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you, brethren, if you, brother or sister, were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, therefore, understand this, the world hates you. They don't like the Christ you have within you. They're not going to like the Christ you have within you. But we're to show them the love of God and pray for them so that they can come to know him. But make no mistake about it. Your coworker may not like you. Your neighbor may not like you very much at all. Don't take it personal. It's the gospel. You represent Christ. Settle it in your mind. Love them anyhow. I was talking to, I hope she doesn't mind, Sister Green here. Sister Green, you here, wave your hand. She's in the back. She told me a story a long time ago, and it just comes to mind, so if you don't mind, it's a testimony. Said there was, I don't know all the particulars, so I'm going to ad lib a little bit, okay? But the bottom line is this. For one reason or another, she had somebody, a neighbor in her building that just really didn't get along with her, didn't like her. And she said, Reverend Kalinsky, I went to prayer. I went to prayer. Would to God that the church would go to prayer and get a hold of God. I'll tell you, if you could be in my Tuesday night prayer meetings, our Tuesday night prayer meetings, I mean heaven has opened up a portal. Come on, somebody. In your prayer meetings that you're having, heaven has opened up a portal for the church to change things in an earthen atmosphere. Oh, glory. All of a sudden, that woman became a friend of hers. Is that right, Sister Green? Changed it around. Go to prayer, church. Wear a smile. Storm heaven. We don't know what they're facing. Perhaps, I got a sign in my basement. It says this, be kind to everybody. You don't know if they spilled coffee this morning. Now, I know that's being facetious, but you don't know what's happening in their life. Now, I love a good cup of coffee, but if I spill it in my car, I'm not a happy camper. Okay? We don't know what's happening in someone's life. Jesus, when he went to the well, he went up and he, you know the story, the woman at the well, he began speaking to her, asking her for a drink. And before they started, as they got talking, all of a sudden the ice is broken and now they're talking about things and the word of, uh, word of knowledge comes to him. He said, go call your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. You're right. You've had five, and the one you're with now is not yours. Maybe if you went to prayer, God would give you an aha moment, and you would have an instant revelation as what's happening in their life. Come on, church. This is our hour to shine. This is our hour to be concerned more so than ever before. We cannot go back into complacency as it was a year and a half ago. We must rise up to the occasion because many are looking for Christ in this hour and he's relying on each one of us to be his voice. John 15 and 19. One more, Titus 2 and 12. Let's see if we can find that one over here. Titus 2 and 12. If I have the right scripture, would have been easier to type, but we didn't do that. All right. I'm in 2 Timothy. Titus 2 and 12. Let's go back to verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Why? Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of that great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, church. That's why. Listen, 
Nobody can take me with them, or I'd probably ride on your coach string sometimes, Brother Yancey. Amen, but I can't do that. I've got to make my salvation sure. I've got to make sure my heart is right with God at all times. I've got to keep on because I want to see Jesus one day. I, can, I get a, 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 the presence of God and the word of God, and you know what I'm talking about if you walk with him any length of time. What has changed in 40 years since you started your walk with God and today? Is there something that has gotten in the way? Is our attention somehow been diverted to a worldly lifestyle in some way? way, shape, or form. Amen. My message today is which way are you going? Or is it a fleshly thing? Have you submitted yourself to the ways of your flesh? Selfishness. Haven't even gotten here. We must constantly keep our flesh crucified to self. It hasn't changed. It's desire, it's intent, it's making sure we're in the right way. He said, if you walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit of the word of God. Amen. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. Turn with me for a moment there. We must keep this old man under wraps. We must keep him subdued. We must keep mortifying the deeds of the flesh. We must keep reckoning the old man dead and we're alive on the Christ. Paul said, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. I bring it into subjection, Paul said. Paul said, I bring it myself under subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself be a castaway. Oh, God forbid that trumpet should sound and the Lord comes. And I didn't keep the way clear. Keep the way clean between my soul and my Savior. Listen, I'm not talking about just thoughts that bombard our minds. We're human. We've talked about this many times over the years. You're, you're brilliant people. You know there's 30, 40, 50, 60,000 thoughts a day. That's not going to keep you out of heaven. It's what you do with them. It's subduing them. It's putting them under. It's not you. It's just wavelengths going by. Just don't stop them. Just don't dwell. Come on, somebody. Don't dwell on it if it's not godly. Don't dwell on it if it's not in the Word. Just let them keep on going. Nothing wrong with you for 30,000 thoughts coming your way. Come on, wave your hand before God and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We must constantly keep this old man under wraps. God is asking the same question today. Are you willing to crucify self? It's a deliberate putting to death of the old sinful nature. This is the question. Amen. I had God visit me in my office the other night. Is Jesus still your choice? In 2021, in the midst of everything happening in this world, is Jesus still your choice? Glory! Is he still your choice? In everything you do, do you still have the love of Jesus and the love for his church? Or has something got in your way? See, that's why, you know, I've heard it a few times in different, in a couple of churches, I should, uh, should say. Uh, my assignment here is over with, so uh, I'm going to so-and-so over here. So you can interpret that in many ways. Uh, I don't like how I'm being instructed. Uh, I don't like how I have to put myself under. I don't like how I have to change. I don't want to change. If you want to go to heaven, you'll change. If you, if you don't want to go to heaven, don't change. But if you want to walk with Jesus, you will change. 
You see, this is the difference of a true born-again, spirit-filled Christian. There will be an entire change in your character and your life. You will not stay the same. You will not go the same way. You'll tell the old ways in that song, you don't, you're not welcome here. You don't belong here. I'm not welcoming you here. I'm not giving you a place here. I don't want you here. See, the problem, the trouble we get into is that we like it. If it wasn't right now, I'd walk the aisles. We like it. We like the sin if it's there. We like the weakness of the flesh if it's there. We give it place. We like the world, so we give place to it where no one else can see us. But God sees you. This is a washing place. It's the blood The blood is here to wash away anything that has tried to hinder your way between God and you. We can be obstinate. Like Satan when he was kicked out of heaven. I, I, I. My, my, my. I'll have my own way. I used to work in ministries, but I like what I'm doing now. I used to labor for God in these areas, but I like where I am. And God sees you, whether it's right or wrong, where you are. Do you still long for his presence more than anything? Do you still long for his presence? When's the last time you felt his presence? Last time you felt him in your home, in your car, going for a walk? How long has it been? Do you still have the same fervency in your heart for Jesus as when he first saved you? Ask yourself that question. This isn't to condemn anybody. This is to help us clean our spiritual focus. God sends the word because he loves us and he, he's cleaning our focus so that we can get refocused. I, I thank God for that. I thank God when... Various ministers get up and preach and said, I needed that today. I needed to hear that today. I needed that to strengthen me today. Praise God, he answered prayer over here. I needed to hear, see, we need one another. We need the preaching of the word. We need different members, amen. The question is, amen, it says in Mark 8, I want to turn there. Mark chapter 8. Now that one I did mark. Mark chapter 8, starting at verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus is saying in 2021, Whosoever will come after me, let him still deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, the old life. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. The message has not changed. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful, amen, generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. John 14 and 6, Jesus saith unto him, meaning Thomas, I am the way, I am the truth, 
and I am the life. No man, no man cometh unto the Father. I don't care where you are, what religion you're involved with, this is the gospel truth. No man's going to meet God except through Jesus Christ. I am the way. I'm the truth and I'm the life. The question is today that has not changed in all the years we've walked with him. Which way are you going now? Which way? God's way? Worldly way? Satan's sinful way? Or selfish way? Which way are you going? Matthew, seven, Matthew chapter 7. Starting at verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way. That leadeth to destruction. And many, many he says. There be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Which way are you going? Second Peter chapter 2. I want this various places here. So let's see what the Word of God says. Second Peter chapter 2. God's helping us this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, wave your hand. Give God some praise in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Second Peter chapter 2 says, But there were false prophets also among the people. Now just don't look here. Look at the church worldwide. Let's look at the church as a whole across the world, across America. But there were false prophets also among the people, as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately, it's amazing how they go to you in private, privily, privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth is evil spoken of. My, 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 in the day we live, Jesus told us in Matthew 24 that the way of truth would be evil spoken of. I, I, I'll tell you what, it, it's, it's been an honor to go to a variety of churches and, and various places. But there's a vast difference I'm finding in those who really have a godly standard and you know it and their devotion to God and the awesome presence of the anointing in the house. Woo! Oh. And we have it in this house. Woo! Glory! God is in control in this house. You see? That's how the servant, you know a servant of God because God's free to move in this house and have his way. A people that's led by the Spirit of God. Amen. I'm going to do some reading. Follow along with me. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Move this over here. Paul here had a lot to say. Read a little, then I'm going to preach a little bit. 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says, Thou therefore, my son, take it personal, my son, my daughter, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. 
Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. A good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Do I have any soldiers in the army of the Lord today? Amen. In studying earlier, God began talking to me as I sat in my easy chair and I started writing some notes. Amen. I spent four years in the United States Marine Corps, so you learn as you go along. You will learn. You guarantee it. You'll learn it one way or another, but you're going to learn the uniform code of military justice and how they do things. Do I have any veterans in the house? Thank you for your service. You know what I'm talking about. In the military, you are called to serve where they send you to serve. Is that true? You were called to serve where they send you to serve. The question is still asked, are you still willing to give up your life in order to gain life? Are you willing to give up yourself, your life, your will in order to serve where God has planted you spiritually in his kingdom? That's why you can't bash one place, go down the road and go to another. It's the same God who's over it all. Pastor, a friend of mine told me, one of his main people, they're, they're leaving. He said, I'm going to go down to Pastor so-and-so's. And he knows this pastor knows Pastor so-and-so. So he says, I'm going to give him a call. And the other pastor said, he ain't coming here. One church. So you can't fool God. You got to deal with, can we say it? You got to deal with self. You got to die to self. You got to put your self under. You got to keep your self walking with God. You got to submit your, oh, who said that word? You got to submit yourself. Where'd that word come from? Who wrote that in the dictionary? Tana across that word out, Reverend. What do you mean submit? You're going to submit to somebody, something, somewhere, somehow. In this life and after this life. Either you submit to God now or you submit to the devil later. Oh my. Oh my. Listen, a God called pastor cannot just get up and leave and go elsewhere. Hello, somebody. A God called leadership made up of individual leaders cannot just get up and move themselves to another place without God leading. Let's bring it home. A God called church, members in particular, do not have the right to get up and leave and go somewhere else. As in the military, they call you where you're to serve. You say, aye, aye, sir. You say, yes, sir. I understand and I'll obey. It's no different in the kingdom of God. Oh, that doesn't go over very well. This is a kingdom work. God plants in the house around the world where he wants them. Amen. Sister Ronke, may I use you as an example for a moment. Years ago, she came to this church. I don't remember how, but that woman got a hold of God. She knew God in her own country. She came here, and I believe it was for six years. She stayed at the horns of the altar. She served in ministry. She walked with God. She did everything she could as an individual to live upright and walk in daily victory. We all know Sister Ronke. She would not give up on her husband coming here. She kept praying, and I'll tell you what. God gave her one of the sweetest husbands anybody could have. Come on, somebody. I believe it's four wonderful children, somebody holding on to God. Come on. Brother Phil, Sister Jasmine, if I may, while it's coming to me. Amen. Brother Phil waited, prayed a long time. Amen. For God to add on to him. For God to add on to him. And God spoke to a Christian woman in another state. Gave her some type of prophecy from, is that right, Sister Jasmine, from her home church? God's going to lead you to a place with a woman named Eleanor with curly hair. 
She looks up here in the phone book, I believe it was, seen the picture, said, that's it, I'm going. What am I saying? God sets in the church. God fills desires in the church. If God planted you here, let your roots keep going down deep. Don't uproot them. Look, I took the master gardening course many years ago. You know what it taught me? I don't know much. But I do know this. If you plant flowers in your garden, there's no way they're getting up on their own and going to another garden. So that means you need somebody, come on now, you need a master gardener to come around and water you and fertilize you and dung you to break, break, break up whatever doesn't belong around that plant so that you can grow and prosper and bloom to your fullest potential in God. There's no room in there for self. It's a yielding to the master gardener as they put the nutrients on you, as they put the manure on you. Come on, go like this. Yeah, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help the soil for your roots to go down deep. I don't like the smell of it. It's good for you. It's going to help you. I, I don't like the cutting away. It's good for you. It's going to give you your joy back. Come on. It's going to take away if there's any confusion. It'll remove confusion out of the way. Come on, somebody. It'll take whatever's trying to hinder you because God loves you. He bought you with a price, and he doesn't want anything to hinder you from being with him for eternity. Moving along here, the kingdom of God, we're an army, the army of the Lord. Amen. Are we willing to give up our rights to serve, learning not to be self-willed, learning to be trained, learning to be submissive? Amen. We are told when we are to serve, you are under orders from your superiors. You know the first thing they have to do in the military? This came to me when I was studying this. You're all going to boot camp. You know why? They're going to break your will. Woo! Glory! It wasn't fun back then in the Marine Corps boot camp, I'll tell you that. 16 hours a day up, tired, man, sweating, man, not feeling good. I had pneumonia one time. They wouldn't let, let me go to sick bay for a couple of days. Had to run the final PFT. What are you going to do if you're at war and you got bullets flying? Wait, excuse me, i got to go to sick bay. Excuse me, I, I've got to leave. I'm on the next plane. No, 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 no. They're going to break your will so that you'll be a good soldier in whatever branch you decide to give your life to. The same in the kingdom of God. Pray about it. See if God's in it. See if God's leading you to, to pick up your roots, to go elsewhere. See if it's God or it's just self. Well, I feel, I feel I'll do better over there. I, I like the sunny state of Florida. I was there not long ago. Couldn't wait for the sun to start coming out here, Reverend. I like the mountains of Colorado. I like the sunny beaches of California. Uh, I, I like it over where it's cold in Alaska, Reverend. Uh, wherever it is, maybe i But did, is God telling you to go there? Come on, church. Let your roots keep going down deep. Let them keep being watered. Uh, why would a leadership do anything to anybody if they've got to give an account to God one day? That's going to harm you. Listen, if you don't want help, nobody's going to do nothing. I had a pastor friend of mine told me when God called him the pastor, Amen. He, he would call this one individual man and he would leave messages and the man wouldn't get back to him. And finally, he said, I'm going to go to his house. And, and he went to his house and he spoke to the man. And the man said, yes, can I help you? I mean, I, I would think you'd say, hi, pastor, how are you? I can tell something's wrong in his spirit already. Yes, can I help you? Well, I, I'm, I've been concerned about you. I'm doing okay. Well, I've called you and you haven't returned my calls. I'm doing all right. In other words, don't bother me. 
And if you don't want to be bothered, then I guess you won't be bothered. Not now, anyhow. But there is grace in the house of God to heal to heal anything that's in the world. Listen, we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. If, if it's one soul God's concerned about you, I, I, God gave me this message. I don't hate nobody. I love you all. But God wants us to get up out of that grave. Get up out of that grave. Get out of that grave and get your joy back up. Get back in the body of Christ. Glory. Come on, give him a shout of praise in here. We can't afford to be isolated. We can't afford to be isolated. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. If a man also strive for masteries, yet he's not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Remember there's power in the gospel. Amen. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. I endure it for your sake. For your sake, Paul is saying, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. It says, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Oh my, would to God that our words would always be uplifting not degrading in any way, shape, or form, but to edify and build up one another. Paul put it in here, charging them before, that they strive not about words to no profit. If you've got nothing good to say, please call somebody else. If you've got nothing good to say, don't put it on Facebook. Come on, somebody. Let your light shine, not your words. Let your light shine that men may see God in you. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Careful what you take in your spirit. When I was a kid, we had to go to the encyclopedia. Remember that, Reverend Mancini? Nowadays, it's in your back pocket. And so much more. I don't think it's always good. For their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Why? Who concerning the truth have erred, saying the resurrection is past already, and throw the faith of some. We talked about false prophets, how they're in various places. You be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you give ear to. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying the resurrection is past. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Come on, somebody. Aren't you glad that he knows you, that you're his? He knows them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. And in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and of some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified in meat for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Oh my, out of a pure heart. 
Paul said, I know no man after the flesh save Christ Jesus and him crucified. In other words, I don't need to know everything going on in your life. I don't need to know everything going on in your life. If you need prayer, I'll agree with you. If you need encouragement, I'll encourage you. I don't need you to dump on me, and I don't want to dump on you. You don't need it, and I don't need it. Come on, somebody. Say amen or oh me. I need your encouraging words. I need your smile. I need your prayers. Right now, I need your virtual hugs. Come on, I, we need one another. Look at your neighbor. I need you. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Why? If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who have taken, who have who are taken captive by him at his will. This know also in the last days perilous time shall come. Chapter 4. Paul says, I charge thee therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Come on, somebody. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You can live any old way you want to live, and you're all right with God. Fooey, it's not the truth. It's not the truth. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof thy ministry. You see, even Paul warned in verse 10. First verse 9. Do thy diligence to, shortly, to come shortly on me. Why? For Damas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. There will be some who are going to depart. Jesus doesn't want them to. I don't want them to. I'm sure you don't want them to. But if we're not careful. I said all that to get to this here account that happened about a year ago that God stirred my heart to bring. I call it the magnet and the watch. My wife used to wear this gold watch. I bought her many, many years ago. Amen. Paid good money for it because she has that type of skin that eats the, the back of all types of other watches and it turns green. Everybody know what I'm talking about? So I said, okay, many, I don't know how many years it's been now, 15, 20 years, I bought her a nice gold watch. Brother Chris, amen, I was on the good side of the house for a while. <laughs> gold watch, beautiful, elegant, loved it. And so a time came, Cher, the watch is not keeping good time. I said, oh, all right, we'll put a battery in it. I took it out, put a battery in it, brought it home. Worked a few days, didn't work. Maybe the battery's bad. That can happen. Brought it back. Brought it back. They changed the battery out again. I'm paying money, by the way. And so, a few days later, watch isn't working again. What's going on here? Well, it's been many years. There's a little play in the stem and the crown where you turn it and the stem that goes in. Well, that's more money. Brother Mike, I went ahead and had it replaced. Time goes by. You know, time's elapsing in all this. I fix it. Some time goes by. 
Jerry, my watch still isn't working. Isn't working? All right, it's been years. Maybe I need to get another move. Maybe it needs to be cleaned. I took it into a jeweler. They went ahead and said, well, it's a movement. Well, the movement's about $175. I already put out batteries, battery fees, and I put out a crown and a stem, $50, $60. What's another $175, Reb? I'll go ahead and get another movement for the watch. They check it. It's working. A few days later, lo and behold, it's not working. I said, what in the world's going on here? So I go ahead and bring it back. So they said, well, well, it's under warranty. We'll send it back and put another one in. So they put another one in. They told me, said, if this one doesn't work, the warranty company's not going to put a third one in because they don't think nothing's wrong with the, with the movement. So they did. Short while later, enough to drive a husband crazy. Now I'm running all over the place. Watch is not working. Yeah, I'm like you. You're a science teacher. Something's wrong here. Something doesn't add up, Brother Mike. Professor, what do you think? I can't figure it out neither, you know. I take it to another jeweler that's a master uh, that they do all the repairs in-house. They go ahead. I pay for another movement. I'm $400 out by now. Yeah, could have... Could have bought a lot of steak for that money, Reverend Ladenbach. I'm telling you, man. Brother Wally, sh shrimp on the barbie. Come on, man. Steaks, lobster tails, or whatever your liking is. Forty other watches for Reverend Ladenbach. We go ahead. They put a movement in it. I take it home. It's working. Yes. Till a few days later. And it stopped working. I bring it back and they test it. Said it's working fine here. And the man said to me, is it near a magnet? And my wife has a magnet clip for her glasses. And every time she reaches up, it pulls it out of sync. And God is saying to this house today, what's drawing you from being in sync? What's drawing you to another way? I have been off. I believe it's working, but I belong to me. It's pulling that line out of sync. Now you don't know what's happening. But God is saying, if you bring me your life, I'll remove that magnet that's drawing you away. Ah! Ah! I'll take it out of the way. You've been around it too long. Listen, we all got loved ones. We got friends we're close to, family members. But if they don't walk in light of this, you cannot let it pull you away. You hear this preacher this morning. God has the preeminence. He's the way that you chose. Not family. Not a job, not money, not anything, but God. What's been drawing on you? While everybody's praying for a moment, to ask yourself, what have I allowed in my life? What have I been near? What have I been giving myself over to that has been slowly pulling me away from the Lord Jesus and his word and his church. This is an encouraging message. God wants to cut that thing that seemingly has power over your life and set you free today. Where the church is praying, if that's you, I want you to stand to your feet where you are. Nobody knows what's going on in your heart, but you and the Holy Ghost. It's a perfect time to stand up and say, Lord, I'm in need of you. There's no shame. It's an honor. He come to cut away the devourer for our sake. Obey the Lord and stand to your feet and let God cut it away. 
Father, I preach this morning for you, Lord. I know you're talking to hearts, Jesus. Oh, God, you won't force them, but you'll beckon them that you want to help them today, Lord. Cut away the things to guard our hearts, to guard our minds, to walk close to you, to stay in the word, to stay in prayer, to stay functioning with the church. Oh, God, talk to hearts. Our people are answering the call. There's room for you. There's no shame. It's an honor. He's beckoning you closer to him. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands up to him. Give it over to him by faith. And when the situation arises, turn away from it and put it under the blood of Jesus and continue to walk toward God. Make the change in your life and God will be with you every step of the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we curse every hindrance. We bind it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, visit your people right now, Lord. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. If you're not saved here today and you're hearing the gospel and you want your heart to be right with God, now would be your opportunity to come down front. There's blue spots marked down here at the altar. Please just come. And God himself, if you're sincere and honest, God will show himself alive to you. I said God himself will show himself real in your life. If you're here, just come. You don't have to understand it all. Just come wanting your heart to be right with Jesus. You see, many years ago, when my heart was in a place and I'm hearing the gospel for the first time, the preacher said, the Lord wants to take you with him. However, if you have not accepted him and your heart's not right, he can't take you. But he loves you and he wants to take you. If that's you, just come. Just come. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet all over the house of God. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord today. Let's thank him for his way. Let's thank him for the way of righteousness. When you think about it, when you first came to him, what did you cut off that brought you the victory? Keep it cut off. Come on, keep it cut off. Keep walking with him. Keep praising him. Keep praying to him. Keep studying the word. Keep involved in the house of God. Love leadership. Love your church. Love the brethren. He said, how do you know they're your disciples, Lord? They'll have love one to another. Love one to another. If there's been a tiff or something between brethren, go to one another. Make it right. Get rid of it. I love you. I need you. Come on, let's praise him all over this house of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Reverend. Come on, love him today. Praise him today. Get reacquainted with him today. Make a fresh dedication to him today. Just love on him while Reverend Lottenbach comes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Keep praising God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah for the lives at this altar. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. If there's anybody else in here this morning that needs Jesus on Facebook, 
If you need the Lord, you may not be physically in this place this morning, but if you need Jesus, now is your time. Go to him right now. Ask him right now. If you're in service and you need, if you have a need, you can come to this altar this morning as well. Come down and pray and bring, bring God your need this morning. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's as the saints pray to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just praise God this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Thank God this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, God. Oh, as the saints pray this morning, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Arms stretched out, hallelujah. Hearts up to Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. There's still room for you this morning. If you have that need today, Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Follow Jesus. Deciding to follow Jesus. Come on, saints, sing that. I have decided to follow Jesus. I won't turn back. Oh, I won't turn. I have decided. Lift your voice up to Jesus this morning. God, I'm going to follow you all the way, Lord. Decided to follow. For me, the world behind me, and the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, I won't turn back, no, I won't turn back. Hallelujah, church, the saints this morning. Would you help us pray? Sister Sue, we laid a prayer cloth here at the altar for her. And her sister has a sickness that she needs God to move on. It's a sickness that Jesus died for. And so today as the body of Christ, as she takes this, already been anointed, the body of Christ, we may not physically touch her, but Jesus... The Bible said he just had to send the word. So as the saints together, we pray for this sister. We pray for her family. We pray for the sickness, hallelujah, for the disease in Jesus' name. For every, every stripe Jesus took, it was for her sister this morning. It was for the healing of the body, healing of the saints, and for miracles. For the, for the edifying of Jesus Christ and so in Jesus' name, we proclaim your word to this sister, God.
God, we've already sent your anointing her way, Lord. God, in faith, we send this prayer cloth. Heal the body. Heal the sickness. Dry it up in Jesus' name we pray, oh God. Cleanse it, and God, may it be for your glory, God. As people see the healing, God, let them see salvation, God. We just thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I feel this right now. What's your need? We prayed for her and her family. And there's faith for her. But I'm telling you right now, there's faith for you and your family in God's house this morning. Hallelujah. I want you to reach up just like you reached down for her. And I want you to reach out to your family. Hallelujah. To your neighbor's family. To your friends. To your co-workers right now. In Jesus' name. Touch them, God. Heal the physical sickness. Heal their bodies of sin, Jesus. Oh, God, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Facebook, reach out right now. Facebook, reach out right now, right where you are. Hallelujah. Jesus, he's in your living rooms, he's in your bedrooms, he's in your car. As they said earlier, if you got to run to the bathroom, he's in the bathroom. Oh my God, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Amen. Come on, send out an amen to Jesus. This is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This morning, Facebook friends, we want to thank you. Thank you for joining us on Facebook this morning. Amen. Everybody, I know you won't be able to see it, but everybody, let's just wave to that camera to all our Facebook friends. They're all waving to you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. We will see you tonight here, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock on Facebook Live. Amen, all of you. So God bless you to our Facebook friends and family. Looking forward to what God is going to do for you. Amen. Amen.